Welcome gracious viewers. Today we will present the last of a two-part series featuring an interview with Dr. Stephen Harefield, a distinguished American monk, Zen priest, and author. As a young soldier in Oh Lac, Vietnam, Mr. Harefield went to a Buddhist Zen monastery where he heard of a prophet from the West named Isa who had lived in India. Isa was the Hindi name for Jesus. After studying in the United States in religion, theology, and metaphysics, Dr. Harefield followed his inner calling to journey to India as a monk. There, his teachers aided him in learning about the enlightened master, Jesus Christ, unlike most people could ever imagine. The only reason they had me in the Hemis Monastery in Ladakh was for that purpose, to find out who Isa was and then to read what he was studying. And then my teachers made sure that I studied every single thing that he did. I shared with you how my teachers smuggled me into Tibet. And that was to go into an, another monastery called the Holy Cross, which is deep in the Himalayas itself. Um, and it's actually built into a mountain. And that's where I read the second series of scrolls on each again. So there are only two monasteries that I know that those documents are in. And I'm not even certain they're still in those two, because they move them. Move them to protect them? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Through his privileged access to secret documents in India about Jesus, Dr. Harefield discovered many details about who Jesus was and what he was teaching. Jesus was in a scene. Um, one of my hobbies is collecting Bibles. Uh, the oldest one I have is 1805, and it's in awesome condition. But you read an older Bible and you read a newer one, and there are huge, blatant differences. In the older ones, it said Jesus would retire to Mount Carmel. In the newer Bibles, it said he would go up on the mountain. Where's Mount Carmel? That's where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. That was the home of the Essenes. Mary, his mother, was a master in the Essenes, and she was a leader. The second thing is, the older Bibles don't say that Joseph was a carpenter. What it says is, is Joseph was a master of the craft. He was an Essene, he was an alchemist. So, what does that make Christ? An Essene. So he was already in the Essene mystery schools at birth. And then when they went to Egypt, they went to Heliopolis, which was the mystery schools in Egypt. And then when he left there, it was back into Israel, where at the age of 13, Joseph of Arimathea took him into India for his master's and PhD, so to speak. So he would become a person of great accomplishment understanding that he was a great soul anyway. Christ studied with the Nathyogis. Nathyogis are really mysterious people. I was out in the field, I was bending over um, um, planting rice this time. All of a sudden, a shadow was cast in front of me, and I looked up, and there was this scraggly, scrungy, dirty little old man. And he looked at me and said, you're an American. I went, yes. And he spit on the ground and he said, you're not worthy, and he walked away. Several days later, he returned and he, same thing. He looked at me and said, I am told you wish to learn the Nath Sutras. And I said, yes. And he goes, you're an American, you're not worthy. You do not have the patience. Four or five times that happened. And then the last time he came up and looked at me and smiled. You're worthy, because I am. I never got upset at it. I just accepted what he was doing and saying. So I spent about two months with this man, and that's where I learned about those sutras. In the Gospels of the Bible, Jesus is described as having spent 40 days in the desert or wilderness, where he was tested by the temptations of Satan. Dr. Harefield explains that Jesus was meditating at this time to complete his self-mastery. He had to wrestle with his mind through the idea of temptation. Imagine me looking at you and saying, okay, I'm about to gift you this power where nothing can overcome it. 
you have absolute power over everything. What's your ego going to do? <laughs> exactly. So in other words, it was about cleansing his own mind. It was his final exam. That's the idea of the, of the temptation. And by the way, the word Satan in ancient Sanskrit, out of the Vedas, is the ego. Hmm. The ego is the most powerful thing that we have, and you have to harness it. But once it's contained and transformed, the divine within awakens. It, he had the knowledge already. And there was that one last hurdle, and he, he overcame it. Dr. Hirfield, many people think that Jesus was a vegetarian. What's your take on that? Um, I have no doubt or no question that he was. Hmm. And, and if, if you want, I can, I'll give you a light idea as to why. The heavier the food, the heavier the body. When we look at our teeth, we weren't made to be carnivores. We are vegetarians. We were supposed to eat vegetables. But he literally was that. He put nothing in his body that created any weight or heaviness or, or would hamper his energy in any way. And that's easy to tell. When you eat a meal, if you feel energized, that's what you should eat. If you eat a meal and you feel heavy, that's foods that you should not eat. So yes, he was absolutely a vegetarian, no, no question. After we return, Dr. Harefield will speak more about the fascinating aspects of Jesus' life and teachings, and how they apply in our own lives today. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our interview with American monk, Zen priest, and author Dr. Stephen Harefield as he elaborates on the metaphysical meaning of enlightened master Jesus' teachings. According to Dr. Harefield, Jesus and his companions had journeyed to India to study the ancient spiritual teachings and practice to reach enlightenment. He wanted to understand all aspects of all belief systems. And out of all the teachings, there were two that had no dogma. One, of course, is the Buddhist sutras, actually three, the Krishna and uh, the Vedas. The Vedic texts are the oldest known philosophical texts about life. And the Brahmins, the Jains, and even the Buddhist sutras to an extent, and even... Uh, uh, the Krishna philosophies, to an extent, all originate out of that one. Even the biblical text actually originate in some fashion or another out of that text. Just like the truth seekers in Jesus' time, Dr. Harefield himself had gone to India in search of his true divine self. It's the simple things that are always the most powerful. And that's the very thing that Christ himself taught. Christ says it in two places. First he says to enter the kingdom you must have the mind of a child. The second time he says it, he says to enter the kingdom you must have the innocence of a child. An innocent, childish mind sees simplicity very easily. And we can invoke that even at our age. And can you elaborate on how um, we find the kingdom within? Christ said first in the book of uh, Luke that you look here and you look there for the kingdom of heaven, yet you do not look within. All right. We also know, according to the biblical text, that God lives in heaven. Well, if the kingdom of heaven is within you and God is in heaven, where does that put God? Within you. So when one wants to find that kingdom, you begin through the idea of meditation. Be still and know. 
One of my teachers one day looked at me and he said, young man, do you like yourself? And I said, no, I don't. And he said, wait here. And he walked away and he came back and he had, uh, I would suppose it was a, like a mirror out of a woman's compact. And he handed it to me and he said, take this with you and sit down and look in that mirror and tell yourself that you love you. And he said, when you've accomplished that, return my mirror. I went back to him about um, 30, 45 days later, and I looked at him and said, Master, I cannot do this. And he said, tell me your experience. And I shared with him that every time I made that phrase, I heard in my mind all the reasons why I was useless, it was no good, uh, it was everything negative about me. And he looked at me and he said, uh, no, you have succeeded, Stephen. And I said, how? He said, now you know two things that you didn't know before. He said, one, you know your path. Your path is through that forest of every one of those things, your ego, which is the second thing you now recognize. Because every time I said that, it was my ego telling me why I didn't like me and why I could not accept me. And then he simply said, take one of those at a time, not all of them, just take one at a time until it no longer exists. And it took quite a bit of time, but none of those things go through my mind anymore. There's the heaven within. Is there anything else that you might like to share with our viewers? But if you really want to light up the world, then open yourself to the truth of your own nature, to the truth of your own divine being. Bring that forth. Bring that forth and give it to all people. Because if you can do that, you've continued the lineage that was set forth millennia ago and by so many great masters. After all, the Christ himself did say, seek first the kingdom and then all else is given you. And to think that we can have anything that we want, anything, by finding that place within us first, then you can change the world. Thank you, Dr. Hickman. My pleasure. Our appreciation, Dr. Harefield, for sharing your candid knowledge about Master Jesus as well as your own special experience in India. May we always remember the timeless wisdom of the great masters and seek first the kingdom of God within. To our viewers, thank you for joining us today. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for our noble lineage right after noteworthy news. May heaven's light guide you always. Dr. Stephen Harefield's book discussing today's topic, titled A Metaphysical Interpretation of the Bible, is available at www.harefield.com and amazon.com. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash AJAR.